It may not be the big four, football, basketball, baseball, or hockey, but lacrosse has an intense following. And the women at Northwestern University know that all too well after going the distance in the NCAA tournament. Ronnie Duncan joins us live from the Old Lasser High School in Bloomfield Hills, where a Michigan connection to the team is there with Northwestern University. Hi, Ronnie. Hey, hi. You know I love this job because teamwork makes the dream work. If you've heard the name Logan Tesmer, he is a producer here at the station. He loves women's sports, especially that of lacrosse, basketball, and even soccer. He said, Ronnie, you need to do a story on this girl, Izzy. She's something special. I said, Logan, set it up. And together, we worked together and came up with the gym, a story I want to share with you of one of the best lacrosse players I have ever seen. I'm very, very proud of being from where I'm from. I, I make sure it's very known. And anytime, anytime anything happens, I want everyone to know I'm not, not an East Coast girl. I, I grew up in outside Detroit, Michigan, and that's, that's where I stayed, and that's where I, I became the player and person that I am. I always kind of wanted to be the one to bring back those national championships and kind of bring back that legacy if possible. I'm very, very happy we could kind of bring it back to back to Evanston and hopefully we can keep that rolling. Izzy's lacrosse journey started when she left the world of gymnastics to pick up her first stick and eventually lead Cranbrook, Kingswood, and Bloomfield Hills to two state titles and breaking the state record for career points. The first time I, I picked up a stick, I knew it was something that I was gonna enjoy. I think another part that I loved was just like the running around part of lacrosse. Like gymnastics is very like structured. You're doing like very specific skills. And once I could kind of just get out on the field and, and run around, it was, something I, I very much enjoyed and I think I knew it was something that was going to continue throughout my life. It kind of clicked right away and um, yeah, I, I loved it. But she couldn't do it alone as her three brothers were there with her every step of the way. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm extremely, extremely close with my family and, and my three brothers are like my best friends in the world. They were having a blast. I remember one of the, one of the final goals I had in the game, I scored and I kind of slid on the ground and I stood up and right there, my, my three brothers standing in the stands cheering for me. I think they always thought that I was, I was destined to do stuff like that. But someone else outside the family knew she was destined for something special. Coach Greg Quarter, who saw greatness in her from day one. She just brings a competitive intensity, a will to win, uh, effort, competitiveness that is just unparalleled. He was, I, th I think, the first person who like truly, truly saw and said what he thought I, I, my potential was. And he, from the very start, said that I was going to do great, great things. And he truly, truly believed in me and, and pushed me like no coach had ever pushed me at that point. Coach Corder was there when Skain won the national championship with the Northwestern. And what he saw on that field was someone who is changing the game of women's lacrosse. I think she's changing the way the women's game is played. Uh, the, the turnover that led to her final goal, uh, you just don't, I, I haven't seen that in the women's game. I haven't seen anyone, an attack player, play defense like she plays. But Izzy's triumphs didn't come without any obstacles. Prior to the 2022 season, Skane tore her ACL and starting a journey back that would eventually lead her to raising the championship trophy. A lot of that was more mentally tolling than it was even physical. I think just having to be in that much pain just to try and get back to doing the thing you love was, it was definitely hard. And it wasn't the only trophy she lifted this season after she won the Tawaraton Award given to the top collegiate lacrosse player in the country. To win something like that is just something I never even like dreamed of. I, I, I dreamt of going to play college lacrosse and win, try and win a national championship and all this stuff, but to be considered that highly in a in a field of girls that are just so phenomenal this year. There are so many good players. It's very, it's, it's an honor. It's very humbling. And dreams like hers don't have to remain dreams to other young girls in Michigan. Lacrosse may be small here, but the sport is growing and Izzy Skein is ready to be at the forefront of that change in her home state. So it takes a little bit of extra effort to kind of get to that level because you're not surrounded by girls who have played since they were two years old and all their parents went to Syracuse to play and, and you don't really see as many kids coming out of Michigan or the Detroit area going to, it's getting bigger and bigger as we speak, which is phenomenal. And I'm so happy to be like part of 
kind of dragging girls with me. I'm very honored and excited about that opportunity because I am very, very proud of where I'm from. How about that? Look at, I'm talking Izzy. These are little Izzy's out here. These are seven, eight great lacrosse players, and they got one thing to tell you. Detroit lacrosse. That's right. They said Detroit lacrosse, and they love watching the news right here with me, Ronnie Duncan, on CBS News. Detroit. You got that?